Hi, I'm Jeff Hoyt, Editor-in-Chief of SeniorLiving.org. Sadly, seniors often incur debts that they're unable to pay. They may get hounded by debt collectors and fear being served with a lawsuit. But attorney Eric Olson wants seniors to know they have little to worry about, even if they have a debt judgment entered against them. Eric is the founder of the Helps Nonprofit Law Firm, which educates seniors on how to maintain their financial independence. In this video, Eric will describe the collections process, what to expect of facing a lawsuit, how their bank accounts are protected in case of a judgment, and how his law firm can help seniors struggling with debt. Due to social distancing guidelines, we will be conducting the interview online via Zoom. Hi, it's Jeff Hoyt, Editor-in-Chief of SeniorLiving.org. And today, once again, I have the pleasure of speaking with attorney Eric Olson. Eric is the Executive Director of the Helps Nonprofit Law Firm that helps seniors and veterans and disabled persons struggling with debt. Welcome, Eric. Glad to be here, Jeff. Good to see you. Likewise. So we've talked about seniors struggling with debt before in various topics, but is that really a major problem among poor seniors today? Uh, actually, it is. Um, statistically, almost half of seniors have incomes within 200% of the poverty line, and uh, um, they're classified as economically vulnerable, and there's studies that show that seniors now retire owing more debt than ever before. Uh, and a lot of them aren't able to pay that debt. Um, yeah, it is a big problem. It's getting bigger as our population ages. And I'm sure the how the debt is incurred uh, matters, but in, generally, what's the collection process? If someone has a debt that they know and it's valid, but they're not paying it, how does the collection process work? I'll explain that, but you said it. it, it is true. You know, people get in debt for different reasons and seniors don't intentionally try to get in debt. It's life just happens. It just happens. Maybe a spouse passes away. Uh, maybe they help their kids out. Uh, maybe they may have been scammed. Uh, and it's just life and they don't do it intentionally and they feel bad about it and they'd like to pay their debt if they could, but some of them are just not able to do it. So the collection process, normally what happens is we'll take a credit card, for example, if you don't pay the credit card bill and you're unable to pay it, um, you're going to get a call. They're going to shut off the credit card. And the creditor, the original creditor, which is the credit card company or whoever you, to whom you owe the money, normally will first reach out to you and try to get you to make arrangements for you to pay. Um, but then if you're not able to pay, then um, they're going to turn it over to someone to do the collection action for them. Um, a collection agency or some other type of debt collector that will actively try to collect the debt. Now, not all of them do that. For example, um, Timeshare would just try to collect the money themselves or they just have an a agency within their company that would try to do that. Payday loans, they try to collect it themselves. Um, so it depends on the creditor, but normally and a creditor will try to collect it themselves. And if they're not able, they're going to turn it over to a debt collector. Now, the debt collector, besides phone calls, can also send a legal letter threatening a lawsuit. Now, there's a big difference between a threat of a lawsuit and an actual lawsuit against a senior, correct? Oh, yeah, night and day. So um, a debt collector is going to do and say about anything, hopefully within the law, to try to collect a debt. Uh, there's a federal law called the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act that tells a debt collector exactly what they can and cannot do. Uh, most collectors follow that law. Some of them don't. Um, but uh, the ones that might not is uh, maybe someone got a payday loan over the internet or on an Indian reservation and they're not governed. I mean, you, they couldn't be sued. So they, they'll do anything they can to try to collect from someone. They'll They'll threaten them and uh, they'll tell them they're going to jail or they'll tell them a bunch of lies because they know they'll never get sued because they're nowhere where they can be sued. Um, you can't sue a company on an internet reservation under federal law. And if they're located overseas, 
You can't do that. And actually, some payday loans advertise overseas payday loan like it's a big deal. Well, the reason they're overseas is so that they can try to manipulate and collect from people. But um, uh, yeah, creditors, uh, credit often creditors will, you know, threaten a lawsuit. Um, they're definitely not going to tell a senior uh, that their income is protected and, you know, you really don't need to pay us because we can't do anything to you. You know, they're not going to tell them that. Well, that's where you come in. So if there is a lawsuit, um, I would imagine a legitimate creditor might judge and say, hey, this senior really doesn't have income. There's not really any point in going after them. But if there is a lawsuit, um, can you explain, uh, first off, how they're protected? And like you said, a lot of creditors that seniors owe money to, someone may make the decision that it isn't worthwhile to sue someone. That's, you know, uh, so as, as we discussed before, uh, social security, pensions, disability, VA benefits, seniors income is protected by federal law, various federal laws and state laws. Uh, it can't be garnished or taken from them. So um, if a, a senior owes money that they're not able to pay and their income is social security and a, and a pension and they were sued and someone got a judgment, that creditor isn't gonna be able to take the money out of their social security or from their pension. And there's also laws in place that protect that money in a bank account. There's a federal law that protects twice the amount of federal benefits deposited into a, a bank account. Um, twice the monthly amount is protected automatically, no mo matter what monies are in there or where they came from, from collection. Um, and the banks are instructed if they get a writ of garnishment from a, uh, a judgment creditor, exam they can examine the bank account, the, the bank account, there's a code there, tells them where the money came from. They times that times two, if it came from a federal source, that amount is automatically protected. Now, if the senior had more than that in there, senior can file a, a challenge of garnishment or claim of exemption and get the money back or prevent it from being paid out. So generally seniors don't have lower income and many seniors do not have to worry about losing any money to a creditor if they owe debt. Clear, if a senior gets $2,000 a month in social security, if they have a bank account with less than $4,000 in it, that money can't be taken by a creditor, even if they prevail in a lawsuit. That's exactly right. No matter what monies are in there. So if they had something like a, sold something on eBay, a gift from a child, it was less than twice the amount of their federal benefit, then the bank is instructed to um, disregard the garnishment, rip it up, throw it away. Doesn't have to be paid. Well, that's good news for many. And what if the senior, once again, getting $2,000 a month in social security has three different bank accounts, three different banks, and they all have less than $4,000 in it. Are they all protected? No, no, just the account into which Social Security is deposited. So sometimes when clients call us or people call us, uh, we'll ask how many bank accounts you have. And, and I'll tell them, you, know, well, you, you should have just one bank account. Get rid of the, the, the savings account. And you just need the account to which Social Security goes. But they really don't need to worry about that unless they're sued and there's a judgment. And so uh, you don't need to do it tomorrow. Um, when you're sued, they don't get a judgment automatically. You'd have time to get rid of that extra account and have the money be just in that one account. Interesting. So if a senior is sued, does that mean they actually have to appear in court? No, 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 no. They don't have to appear in court. So what happens when a senior sued, um, if a creditor decides to sue a senior, okay, uh, they'll prepare some paperwork and um, it's called a summons and a complaint and it's filed in court. And that is filed to establish that a person owes a certain amount of money for a certain debt. And then what they'll do is they'll give it to a process server to serve it on the senior. And they'll file in court, they pay a filing fee then they give it to either a private process server or a civil deputy. Like a, um, all counties have a, a sheriff, sheriffs that are civil deputies and they have a badge, they have a uniform, they even carry a gun, but their job is not to arrest people. 
their job is to serve legal papers on people. And so seniors sometimes might be scared. Oh my gosh, I'm going to jail if I don't deal with this. Uh, uh That's just their job. And so you're served with a summons or complaint and the, the summons will tell you what your rights are. It'll say, you have so many days to file an answer or, or respond to this. Now, a lot of people get confused because in some, some courts, there'll be, a, there'll be a, a, a date and a time for a person to appear in court. And so they get that summons and complaint, they've been sued and they think, oh my gosh, I gotta go to court. Well, no, what, what that says is, if you're going to contest this matter, then this is the court date for you to appear. But if you're not gonna contest it, which many of them don't need to worry about, then no, they don't need to go to that court date. So, I mean, you can always contest a lawsuit if you've got a legitimate reason to do that. You can do it yourself um, if you want, um, but if you do it just for the fun of it, you might get embarrassed and it could be a waste of your time. Normally it costs money to file an answer, uh, and if your income is protected, as I've already explained, there's no need to go through that. People's bank accounts are protected against a judgment uh, under certain circumstances. What about their car or their home? Could uh, their property be seized if they uh, have a judgment uh, rendered against them? No, generally no, almost always no, and I'll, I'll explain why, okay? so. I'm an attorney for 42 years, probably filed 40 or 50,000 bankruptcies. Uh, and so a lot, I've met with a lot of people that owe debt and have had judgments and I know what creditors do. I know what the law is, but then I know what happens in real life, okay? So every state has exemption laws. And these are laws that say how much property or equity in property a person has is protected under that state law. For example, um, there's exemption laws that protect equity in a home. Some states have an unlimited exemption like Texas, Oklahoma, Florida has big exemptions on a home, but then some states have really teeny exemptions on a home, Florida, Virginia, 5,000 bucks, Pennsylvania, they don't have one. Um, California has a pretty good exemption uh, on a home, equity in a home. And then, uh, then, there, then there's exemptions for a car or cars or, and then personal property like furniture, different, different other things. And a lot of times these exemptions have add-ons for people over a certain age. So seniors get extra exemptions, okay? So, but the question is, if you've got a piece of property that's worth more than the exemption and someone gets a judgment against you, does the senior need to worry about um, someone going after that property and taking it from them? even if they if they got equity over the exemption in the in the and the answer is with very very rare exceptions no they don't need to worry worry about it it is not the practice of consumer judgment creditors uh um credit card companies for example that gets judgments to go after a person's property even if they have assets over and above the exemption if they have a even if they had a home that's free and clear uh, in 42 years of practice, I uh, maybe seen that happen well, less than two or three fingers, if that. It just doesn't happen. The reason, and the same thing for personal property, they, or a car or other assets, for a lot of different reasons. I guess one reason is it can be stopped through a, a different type of bankruptcy filing. Uh, a lot of times, people's personal property isn't worth near as much as what the person who owns it thinks it's worth. And the creditor finds that out and they learn by sore experience, it's not worth their while to go after a person's property. Great, so it sounds like you're you know, easing the burden a lot of people that if they are seniors sued for a debt, even a legitimate debt, um, many times their bank account can't be seized. You're saying the personal property, even though legally it could be seized, uh, for the most part that doesn't happen in the real world. So that's all reassuring news. Um, tell me how your law firm, the Helps Nonprofit Law Firm, can help people who are dealing with these debt issues. What we do is um, if people find out about us, they owe debt. Uh, a lot of them don't realize their income is protected. And so they call us on the phone and uh, we talk to them, find out what their situation is. 
And we explained to them, hey, your social security, your pension, your disability, your VA benefits protected. Um, we talked to them, are you buying a home or are you buying a car, do you own a car? Can you afford to keep it? Uh, maybe a car may, ha may needs to go back that they wanna let go. Uh, and we'll go over their situation. And so under federal law, under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, if a person is represented by an attorney, debt collectors can no longer call that person or send them a demand anymore. And so what we do is we talk to seniors and they enroll in our program. We don't turn anyone away that needs our help. And um, they tell us who they owe money to. We send a cease and desist letter to that creditor or debt collector uh, and the contact stops. Uh, they can no longer call them or send them demand letters anymore. And they know that. Uh, the only ones who disregard that might be a, a payday loan uh, through uh, you know, the inter uh, Indian Reservation or over the internet or some high interest creditor that doesn't care. Sometimes they're a little bit more aggressive, but when they get, uh, debt collectors know when they get a, a letter from an attorney that uh, I can't communicate with this person anymore. And then, so, they're our client. If they're ever worried or they have that question, they call us on the phone. Occasionally they get sued. So, or they're worried about getting sued. And if they, if they're worried about it, uh, we send it, we explain to them why they, they're not going to need to worry. In fact, we have a letter we send to people with links to articles and YouTube videos that explains why they don't need to worry. And actually has a copy of a letter we send to an attorney. So if one of our clients gets sued, we send a letter to the attorney saying, Hey, you sued this, sued this person. Um, their income is protected. Here's proof it's protected. Understand you're going to get a judgment. Please don't bother their bank account. They can't anyway for the other reasons I told you earlier. It's protected anyway. Um, and that's it. So the senior isn't going to have to go to court. Um, and that's the end of the story. And they don't need to worry about it. Well, that's very reassuring. And so how can a senior reach out to HELPS Law Firm? How can they contact HELPS? It's easy. Um, we're all over the internet. Uh, it's HELP stands for Help Eliminate Legal Problems for Seniors. Our, our phone number is 855-HELPS-US, H-E-L-P-S-U-S. Um, our website is www.helpsishere.org. Uh, uh, we never turn, we're a 501c charity. Now, what does that mean? That means that we never turn anyone away that needs the help we provide, okay? Uh, uh, we don't care if they can't afford our help, they get it for free. Those that pay, pay a very minimal amount. Uh, we're here to help seniors. And as far, uh, uh, and we're the only nonprofit law firm in the nation doing what we do. We do a lot of other things as well. We educate seniors how they can maintain their financial independence. Um, so we can help them with questions they have in that regard. Uh, we don't represent people in court. Uh, we don't need to, uh, but we can protect them from the creditors hounding them and protect them from being intimidated by debt collectors. So we'll never tell them what their rights are. They'll do anything they can to kind of scare them into pain. And uh, we'll tell them, hey, you don't need to sign up for debt management or debt settlement. These companies will never tell a senior that their income is protected. Instead, they'll take their monthly payment to pay their bills so they collect a fee. Uh, so, you know, lower income of poor seniors, their money is available for them. They can use it for their medicine, for their food and for their needs. And they don't need to be worried about a judgment and uh, they're not gonna have to go to court. And if they got any questions, they can always call HELPS. Well, really appreciate it. Keep up the good work, Eric. And thanks for taking the time to- uh... Thanks for having me, Jeff. Appreciate all you do. Thank you, likewise.